Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make hyper realistic images using Midjourney or any other tool like Leonardo.ai. I've seen this done by a couple other YouTubers and so I wanted to test it out, do it myself. So let's get into it. So there's four categories that I'm going to show off how to get hyper realistic images from and they're going to be food, models slash portraits, architectural, and nature. So the first one I'm going to show off is portraits or models. So you can see right here, let's open this up. Here's four examples first of hyper-realistic images. These were just done with basic prompts, nothing too fancy. And the prompt I use for these four is studio style, photo of a woman, light background shot on Kodak Gold 200. I think I found this from somebody else, but it seems to work really well. And so a couple things that you wanna note first, a studio style, so that means you're shooting indoors, really good, clean lighting, light background, and then you're also gonna name the specific camera. And that's really important because you can get different shots, every camera, every lens, every camera setting produces different image quality, different qualities of the image. And so if you do a little bit of Googling and you find a photographer that you really like, or you find a camera that you think produces really nice images, you can actually input that directly into Mid Journey and get images that look very similar. So that's a really good way to find a style that you like and, and get uh, those results pretty quickly. So another technique that I found works really well is actually finding a photographer that is pretty well known, something that you can Google and a lot of images come up, and then using that photographer's name in the prompt itself. So in this example, I say man in the style of an a Annie Leibovitz portrait photograph. So if we click in, I mean, these are incredibly detailed, highly realistic, and they're shot in the style of Annie Leibovitz, who is a very famous portrait photographer. And here's another example, uh, Richard Avedon. Not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, these aren't as realistic, but they are hyper detailed. So these are in his style. And here's one that I took that was upscaled. So you can see really, really nice detail. And so there's a lot of keywords that tend to get you hyper realistic photos. And some that I've found with doing a bit of of research are so I'm going to type slash imagine we can do photo realistic that's an obvious one HD 8k this is all telling the prompt that we want a high quality hyper detailed image hyper detailed I mean we literally just spell it out photograph and we can say let's use let's also name a specific camera so a Hasselblad h4 D slash 40. I have some notes off to the side of my screen, which is what I'm looking at. And I am automatically, I have it in my settings to use version four of Mid Journey. So make sure that you're using that as well. And so another way to get really realistic and detailed looking photos is to define the type of light that you want. And so you can say cinematic lighting. Oh, this is funny. It's actually producing hyper-realistic photos of the camera itself. And so let, let's try that again, because I forgot to actually type in what the subject of the photo should be. So let's say woman in blue dress, photorealistic HD 8K hyper-detailed photograph, the camera type. And again, one thing that you can always control for is the type of lighting. So let's use cinematic light and let's see what that produces. And so I'm gonna list off a few of the keywords that I found work really well for portraits. They're gonna be right on the screen right now. So photorealistic painting, sharp focus, 8K, uh, perfect composition, cinematic. One other thing I wanna try is actually adding in the keyword natural skin texture. And what I'm hoping for is that we're gonna get something that looks a little bit less like an oil painting, something more like a photo. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, this one especially, you can actually see some texture on the skin, a little bit of wrinkles. Uh, this one as well, really, really nice. And so let's try upscaling one. I think this one looks the most real, the most natural. So let's go ahead and upscale V2. And again, like I mentioned, you can always Google different photographers that you might like and use their names directly in there and you'll get an image similar to their style, as long as they're decently well known. Something else that I saw another YouTuber do is uh, use the keyword Polaroid, which actually seems to work really, really well. His name is Maximize. And if you look at some of these images, 
They look super real. I mean, there's a little bit of oddness with the eyes, but since they're Polaroids, I mean, something about that effect really makes it look real. One thing that I tried to do is I noticed that any of the subjects with sunglasses on tend to look a little bit better, a little bit more real because you're not seeing their eyes. And you know, you're, you have about a 50-50 shot of the eyes looking natural. So if you put sunglasses on all of them, that tends to make them look a lot more real, like this one. It's super blurry, but this looks like a real Polaroid. And this one as well, all of the subjects are wearing sunglasses, so you can't really tell. I mean, if I put this on Facebook or any other social media platform, people would think these are real photos of real people, and they're not. I really like this one right here, so let's go ahead and scale that one up. Oh, it looks like I already did that, and there it is. So one other thing is that I added straight teeth. I, I don't know if it's actually helping or not, but I noticed that some of the teeth in the images look kind of long or kind of funky, so, I just put straight teeth. You can also use negative keywords like, um, you know, missing teeth, long teeth, play around with it, see what works for you. Okay, so here's that upscaled photo. I mean, it looks pretty real. Maybe the shoulder looks a little bit like an oil painting or, or clay, but the face is really nice, really some, some good textures. The eyes look natural. The hair uh, looks pretty good, a little bit blurry, but it's pretty good. Overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So let's move on to food next. And I already grabbed a few examples. One thing that you can do while you're trying to figure out what's working for you is actually find other images that you like and look what they did. So in Mid Journey, you can go to one of the public channels, find an image you like, grab the prompt and test out different keywords from that prompt. You can also do the same thing in Leonardo.ai because you can actually scroll through all of the photos quickly and see which model they used. Was it a fine-tuned model? Was it an out-of-the-box model? So let's look. Cake, fluffy and moist, delicate layers of vanilla and chocolate, blah, blah, blah. It's listing a bunch of characteristics of what we're looking for and the images look incredibly real, incredibly detailed. I'd say maybe one fault is that the cakes themselves look a little bit grainy, but overall really good. I mean, especially the fork, the plate, the candlelight in the background, it looks really good. And so let's upscale one of these. I like version four, so let's go ahead and get that one. One thing that works really well for food pictures, food images, is describing it in high detail. What I found with Mid Journey and Leonardo is that keeping it simple tends to work well a lot of the time, but for food, what I found is actually using a lot of description tends to produce the best images. And here's that upscaled photo, really nice. A little bit blurry in the front, but there's plenty of detail here. The cake looks delicious. You can see little crumbs here. The fork looks natural, has a nice glare to it. Bokeh in the background, and for those who are wondering what bokeh is, it just means that the, the main subject is in focus and the background is blurry and it gives a nice cinematic look to it. So you can probably see even with the camera, I'm using to film me talking, everything behind me has this nice blur to it and it gives it a high quality look. And you can achieve that in the image as well. You can use the word bokeh. Okay, next I wanna show some nature. And so here's a prompt that I used, very short, very simple, close up of an ant, realistic, photorealism, AK, hyper -detail detailed. And I mean, these look pretty good. Anatomically speaking, I don't know how accurate they are, but they do look quite good, quite detailed, quite real. Kind of a funky antenna coming out of here on this guy, but this one looks really good. This one looks really good as well. You can really just see every single hair coming out of this guy's eye. So I want to try something else. Let's create a new one. So what I want to create a picture of is a parrot. I want a 12K. I don't know if 8K, 4K, or 12K actually makes a difference, but let's just use it. High quality, HD, photo, realism. And another keyword I like to use for nature is uh, National Geographic. And let's see what happens. You can really see each of the feathers, uh, a little bit of feather blurriness over here, but even within each feather, you can see the fine details. The beaks are absolutely incredible. You can see some of the cracking in the beaks. Really impressive. I really like this one, this close up. So let's go ahead and upscale that one. That's number three. Click upscale, so we'll get that. And so again, using National Geographic really helps. Those are, they are kind of the, the name brand for nature photography. And a lot of the same keywords work across all of these different categories of photography. All right, here we go, the upscaled version. Let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, this is beautiful. Here's actually one more detailed animal that I wanna show off. 
So for this one, I used hyper detailed photography, National Geographic, lion running in the wild, facing camera, detailed fur, Unreal Engine 5. Now, Unreal Engine is unreal. It's not real by definition. It's actually uh, software you use to create images, but they, I think when you use that keyword, it just adds a very detailed and realistic look to it. Intricate detail, AK, perfect composition. You can read the rest. So let's look at the results. I think they look pretty good, a little bit grainy, like right here. Obviously this is sand, so it literally are, they are grains, but I think it could be a little better. Here's another example. And so the fur on this guy is really, really nice. There's some blurriness around his uh, nose, but overall pretty good, very detailed. And I think if you're, you know, even just a, a few feet back from the computer, you really won't be able to tell. And here's, here's a fantastic example. The eyes look incredible. The hair looks incredible. Again, a little bit of blurriness around the snout, but it looks really good. Okay, so for the last category, I wanna show off architecture, and this is uh, interior design. So let's go ahead and type imagine. I already have a prompt that I've used, so let's try it again. Interior of house, beautiful architecture, interior design, realistic, realism, modern. Fo I'm gonna add photograph. Let's use global illumination, meaning I don't really want any shadows. I don't want any uh, beams of light. I want it to be pretty evenly lit. So let's see how that does. Now, as you get into it, you can really describe the type of interior design that you're looking for. If you're looking for a specific style, if you're looking for a specific pieces of furniture, artwork, lamps, lights in general, you can get as detailed as you want. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, some of these are okay. This one's pretty nice. Okay, so I grabbed a prompt from prompthero.com and let's try this one. So this one says high resolution photography, interior design, dreamy sunken living room, conversation pit, wooden floor, small windows, opening into the garden, Bauhaus furniture and decoration, high ceiling, beige blue salmon pastel palette, interior design magazine, cozy atmosphere. Well, let's see how that does. Okay, let's take a look. These look really good. Everything looks really natural. This one's beautiful with the light coming in, illuminating the couch, the shadows in the back of the couch, nice wooden floors, really nice. So that's it. That's how to get hyper detailed, very realistic images from Mid Journey or Leonardo. Architecture, food, nature, and portraits. I think overall my favorite are the portraits. Those look the most natural, the most real, the most detailed. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.